Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on this second generation Cadillac CTS and uh, this is the 2008 model um, but it should work uh, for several other year models as well, probably the 2008 through 2014 if I'm not mistaken. Um, so what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be troubleshooting and hopefully repairing an issue um, with the heating and cooling uh, in this car, the air conditioning and the heater. So my wife drives this car and she is reporting issues where it just blows hot air um, instead, of, uh, instead of the air conditioning. Um, so and no matter what temperature she sets it at, she's getting hot air. Um, these uh, cars have several uh, what's called mixed doors and uh, mixed door actuator motors that are buried deep inside the dash. And so we're going to be talking about troubleshooting and uh, working on and replacing uh, one of those today. So if you're new to the channel, um, I would encourage you to check it out. Uh, we've got a bunch of other videos, um, not only on this CTS, but also a second generation, well, first and second generation SRX and uh, videos on the uh, new XT5 as well. So check it out and subscribe if you're into this kind of thing. So as I uh, mentioned earlier, there are several of these uh, mixed door actuators in the uh, CTS. Um, but if you're going to be replacing the same one that I am, uh, this is the GM part number. Um, they do make some aftermarket um, uh, actuators. I decided to go with the genuine part. At the time of filming, I want to say with shipping and tax and everything, it was about $65. So let's see what's in the box here. So on this particular actuator, we have uh, basically a whole kit to replace uh, everything that attaches to it. Uh, the motor itself and these other uh, links and arms and whatever you want to call them, um, as well as some new, um, looks like some sort of lithium grease if I had to had guess. Alright, so before we get started with actually repairing uh, this problem, um, let's get a little bit better of understanding on how uh, this system works and uh, the different components involved. Um, so there are actually, from what I understand, four different uh, mixed door uh, actuators. And basically what a mixed door is, is there's a little flap um, and it directs airflow. Um, so there are several, uh, four to be exact, um, of these mixed doors and there are actuators, which are little motors that, that operate those, those mixed doors. So, a lot of the problems that you're going to see um, with airflow and um, things coming out the wrong temperature and whatnot are related to these uh, mixed doors failing. And sometimes, not always, um, but sometimes a uh, something that you'll see before this occurs is you'll start to hear a lot of chatter um, behind the dash, little weird noises, little motor noises and thumping and chattering and things like that. And a lot of times that's a sign that one of those mixed doors is failing. All right, so let's talk about the, the four mixed doors in the CTS and what they do. And this will help you narrow down uh, which one is causing your issues. Um, so there is a mixed door, um, or there's an actuator for the uh, recirculation mode. Um, so when you hit this little button down here to choose whether the air is just circulating inside the cabin or whether it's pulling air from the outside, um, there is a door that operates that. Um, the other one, or the next one would be the mode door. Um, so when you choose, when you hit these buttons over here and manually choose where the air is going to come out, so whether it's coming out of the floor here or up, the to up top, um, that's, that's, um, that's what that particular actuator does. Um, you know, of course, there's things that automatically happen with with most of these actuators, like when you turn on the defroster or when the car turns on the uh, or to defog the, the windshield and whatnot, uh, that also uh, comes into play. And finally, and the topic of today's video uh, are going to be the right and left blend door uh, actuators. Um, so basically, uh, and I think this is on all trims. I don't know, but at least on this trim CTS, you have the option of having. Uh, the temperature be separate. Um, so, so the passenger and the driver can control how hot or how cold um, they want the air that comes out. So, you know, you can have it set much colder over here, 
than over there and vice versa uh, with these controls over here. And so there is a blend uh, actuator on each and a blend door actuator that determines um, you know, how much hot or cool air it's pulling and pushing out uh, into the cabin. So there's one for this side and one for this side. Um, so you know, some, some quick and dirty ways you can kind of get an idea of, of if, which door is malfunctioning. Um, obviously, if you're having problems with temperature, it's probably going to be the right or left blend door. Um, but, you know, if you want to rule things out, you know, uh, let's switch this off, off of uh, auto mode and we are going to crank the fans all the way up. And I'm sorry, it's probably going to get noisy in here. So let's check, check the mode. Uh, mode actuator operation. So I'm going to mash that down and I can, I can feel that the air has changed uh, to the floorboard. And so if we hit it again a couple more times, now it's changed to the floorboard and out these front vents. And if we tap it a couple more times, now it's coming up top here. So we know that that uh, that that particular actuator is working properly. So we we'll switch it back over here to auto mode. Uh, if we want to check the recirculation actuator, um, we can just press this button and, and listen and, and hear the airflow. It's probably hard to tell on camera, but you can kind of hear the, 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 the tone of the airflow changing as it's uh, pumping it from either indoors or outdoors. And then finally, um, on, the, uh, on the temperature side of things, we would want to check both sides and uh, see what, what happens as far as temperature goes. Now, in my particular case, what is happening is she was having an issue, my wife was having an issue where no matter how far she dropped the temperature, it was still blowing hot air. Um, what I discovered after I got in the car is this side was actually blowing somewhat cool air. It would, it would respond, and this side would not. Um, so, you know, the easy way to check that is just to uh, ramp the fans back up so you can really kind of see what's going on. And then ramp this side up. And I, I've, I heard the, uh, I heard it switch over to heat and it stopped blowing out of here. And normally the heat's coming out of the bottom. Um, and then if we go the other direction, I can now hear that it's switched over to air and we're getting cold air over here. So we know this side is, uh, seems to be functioning properly. Now this side, on the other hand, um, as long as it doesn't make a fool out of me, let's turn off the passenger mode here. This side, on the other hand, um, you know, we're down here at, you know, pretty cold and we are getting cool air out here. But if we crank this up, still getting cool air because it's stuck on the cool mode. So I've told it to just come out of these vents here and I'm not getting hot air over here. Whereas if I switch it on over here, we are getting hot air. So this one's stuck on cold right now. Um, and before it was stuck on hot, it, it was real intermittent. She would, she would have problems sometimes and not other times. So that's kind of some ways you can do some troubleshooting. Um, sorry for the long, drawn out um, explanation there. Uh, I just think it's helpful to troubleshoot you know, ahead of time before you start throwing parts at it. Um, but that's kind of how you can do some, some quick, dirty troubleshooting if you don't have you know, te uh, computers to hook up and run tests, you know, if, if you if you have access to what the dealership has, they can just plug a computer in and it'll run a test on the mixed doors and everything else. And another quick thing that you can look at is when we get to where this mixed door is and we start to look at it, um, my understanding is that when you start the car up, it should the mixed door should run through its, its full operation. So if you start the car up and you don't see any movement, 
um, out of that actuator, there's a pretty good chance that that's the problem. On mine, I saw it move a, a little bit once and then it never did it again. So, um, so I kind of fiddled with it um, kind of to get it stuck on the cool mode for now. Um, so she would be comfortable in the, in the summer heat that we're getting into now. Um, but we didn't get, need to get this fixed because it's unreliable and we don't want to have an instance where uh, out driving on a hot day and it starts only blowing heat again. So let's talk briefly about getting to these actuators. That is the whole, uh, the whole issue with this repair. These actuators are buried deep within the dash. Um, as far as I understand with the research I've done, at least with this particular actuator that we're working on today, and again, this is the blend uh, on this side, on the, on the driver's side, um, and, and really, as far as I understand all of the actuators, the official Cadillac way to do it at the dealership is they would pull the whole dash out. Uh, to get to these, and which is just insane, um, you know that. I mean, that's a huge, huge job. Don't quote me on this, but some numbers I've found doing and digging the the book on it is like seven or seven and a half hours of labor. And I've talked or I, I've seen some mechanics state they can do it in about five hours. You know, and so it's just it's an insane amount of work to get to these. Um, I do believe that we're going to be able to get to this particular actuator without going that deep and that's what we're going to to look at today um, I haven't really dug in as deep on the other actuator locations I would say that the blend door on the passenger side probably is a similar level of difficulties I don't know on the others but today we're going to be talking about this one here and I'm going to guess most of you if you're even considering this repair you're familiar with the battery location but we'll cover that anyway to be thorough so this little guy comes off there, and then um, these uh, these battery cables are clamped on, so that makes it kind of easy um, to pull that off. Go ahead and just pull the positive cable off. So as I mentioned earlier, the goal of today is to replace this actuator without tearing the dash apart. That means we're going to need to work in the driver's side uh, footwell. So space is going to be at a premium. Um, it's not going to be <laughs> particularly fun. Um, I apologize in advance that from here on out pretty much I'm going to be filming this with not this camera. I'll be filming it with a GoPro so the audio and video quality is not going to be up to what I normally use. Uh, but I just don't think there's going to be enough room to work down there with this big camera. Uh, so in order to maximize the amount of space we have. I'm going to go ahead and push this seat all the way back. Um, I have heard people talking about removing uh, the front seat altogether. That, that would probably be, be great because you could lay down in there. Um, I'm going to attempt to do it without getting into removing that entire seat. All right, so here we are up under the uh, dash on the driver's side. Uh, first, we need to remove this uh, panel here, which is pretty easy. We've got three Phillips screws along the front edge here, so that's no problem there. put those screws somewhere you're not going to lose them for later. All right, so then we're just going to pull this down. And there are some um, connections. There's two connections uh, for lights. Uh, so we'll need to disconnect both of those. And it can be a little tricky. It wants to hang on all kinds of stuff. Pull that out. All right, so now we've got a little bit better access, and um, I'm trying to move the camera around here. If we look real close, um, we can see uh, this piece here. This, this this white piece is what controls. Um, one of the uh, mixed doors that we're, uh, that we're worried about. And that little link goes up to the actuator, which is way up in there. And therein lies 
all the fun with this job is that it's just going to be really, really hard to get to this. All right, so this right here is the um, actuator in question. Um, there's a Phillips screw on the bottom, but there's, uh, I believe, a couple up top. So that, there's the issue is there's just, I mean, you can see about almost, um, almost the width of my finger between um, here and here. Um, so that is really the challenge. Um, but I think what we can do here is um, this right here uh, with all these different color plugs in, in it, um, that's what's called uh, the BCM or body control module if I'm not mistaken. And there's really not much holding this here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a note. I'm going to take a picture of the order of these plugs. All right. So green, from left to right, it's green, gray, blue, black, brown, purple, gray. Um, so <clears throat> we are going to unplug all of those. And, and just for orientation, in case you've lost it, the front of the car is this way, uh, the back is this way. So and these have, these cord cables have plenty of slack all right that's out and then I think I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can unplug this it's some sort of sensor for the brake I believe go ahead and pl unplug that And this should give us enough room. Um, there's a clip somewhere up here. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a clip down here at the bottom edge. I don't know if you can see it. I don't, hopefully I have this all in frame. So we're gonna pull that clip and pull this whole thing down. should allow this to come out. And now we have a lot more room to work up here. Um, so I think this is gonna be a lot more doable now. Okay, so let's get a little bit more familiar with what we've got here. Um, again, the actuator's up here and there's an electrical connection to it that we'll have to unplug at some point. We've got a little white arm um, that if I'm not mistaken, that little arm right there is actually connected to the actuator motor itself. We've got a link here. We've got this little guy here, and this guy um, controls, I believe, two different flaps, uh, or two different mix doors. Um, this in the middle is just where it's connected. That's not the that's not the door it's controlling. Down here, if you look real close, um, we've got a little track and in, in, in this arm, and that's part of what it controls. And there's a second one, and it's kind of hard to see up at the top. Um, so when we take this apart and put it together, we got to pay attention and make sure that um, this is properly seated on both sides. Um, so, and this is where too, like if you were waiting on the part to come in, um, what you what you conceivably can do um, if you really needed the the AC. I, I just happened to get this uh, positioned right um, where it was on AC all the time. Um, since mine's not working at all, but if yours was intermittent, um, it'll be real easy to pull this off and kind of fiddle around with the two doors and figure out what makes it cold, and um, <clears throat> and then kind of just uh, you know tape it in place temporarily until you get your part. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is remove this screw here. All right, so that screw has a little. Um, plastic washer type thing that you can see. Um, the kit should come with everything you need, but um, uh, if you buy the uh, OEM kit new, I'm not sure if the aftermarket ones come with all this or not. Um, I'm gonna hang on to everything just in case though. So we can pull this off now, and then we can pull that little link out just to make it easier to work on everything. So now you can get a better idea of one of the uh, 
doors it's controlling, uh, which is this guy right here. And then there's a second one right up here. And I'm not sure that I can really get that on camera. I'll try here in a minute. This one is kind of spring controlled. When you push it one direction, it pops back. Um, let's see if I can get that on camera. Really have no idea if that's showing up because I can't see the screen. But this little, if it is showing up, that's the other uh, component that that is controlling. All right, so I guess we're going to try to tackle that easy screw on the bottom first. This is where it's useful to lay on your back. So even this stubby screwdriver is having a hard time fitting in there, but I did purchase a cheap little tool on Amazon to help. All right, so I've got this little ratchet I got off Amazon cheap. Little, let's see, put a little screwdriver bit in it. So I'll link to that in the description below. And it looks like that bit that came with it really isn't long enough. There's one little screw out. I think that's one of three. And I'll show you later where those screws are, but I do not think there's a way I'm going to be able to film getting my screwdriver up here uh, because I really need to get up under here better. All right, as you can see, I finally was able to get this guy out of here. Um, so, the way I'm holding it right now is how it is mounted to the vehicle. So um, this direction is the back of the vehicle, that's the front of the vehicle, up is the dash. So it's mounted like that, that little electrical connector just clips on there. So thankfully, you know, we've got the, the uh, screw that we took out uh, earlier, which was here, uh, which wasn't horrible to get to, it wasn't great, it wasn't horrible. I was under the impression there was two screws up top, because there's two holes up there, uh, but thankfully it's just one, because oh man, that was that was fun to get to. Um, so this was basically I had to have this, even with taking the BCM out of there um, to have a little more space. This was a necessity, and there was just really no way for me to see what I was doing. So finally, I ended up um, just kind of kneeling outside of the car and feeling my way up up around here, finding where that screw was sticking this on here and trying to with one hand trying to hold it on there and the other hand just gradually turning it and 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 uh getting it loose so it is possible to remove this um without dismantling the dash um so this is what the back side looks like here this of course is that arm that went down and um let's look and see there's actually a third flap or something that it's moving so let's look at that real quick. So this is what it looks like with it removed. And you can see there's this third uh, third arm here that it's going to be moving back and forth. So that's a third thing that we've got to make sure is lined up um, when we put this all back together. And if you guys want to hang on to the end of the video, I'll, uh, I'll take this thing apart for science and see what's in it. So le left is the old one, right is the new one. Um, you can see that wherever this one got stuck um, was a different angle um, than where this one is comes from the factory. Um, not really sure that it's a good idea to manually move this. It doesn't feel like it will. Um, so we'll have to make sure that you know that we line all that up, and hopefully. You know, I'm not, I couldn't find a whole lot of information as far as positioning goes and if it needs to be something that needs to be synced or anything like that. But hopefully the way this comes from the factory, once you line this up and all the other pieces are lined up, um, hopefully uh, with the battery disconnected, everything relearns what it's supposed to do. I guess we are going to find out. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and mount this guy up there. Um, and um, like I said, unfortunately, there's just not enough room to, 
shove this camera up there and work at the same time, but hopefully you're getting a general idea of what's involved. Here. And one more quick note, these two screws that held the actuator in place are not included um, with the kit. So you wanna make sure that you uh, keep up with them and uh, try not to strip them out. All right, we'll see if we can at least film some of this. Um, I'm gonna start with the bottom screw again because a little easier to get to and I would not want to um, try to get that top one positioned. And you can see I've got the white arm hooked in and right now I'm actually, I've started the bottom screw but I'm actually wondering if it'd be better to start the top one too because I'm not really sure Hard to tell where that, I think that needs to go up like that. You can see that moving that flap. So probably need to go ahead and start that top screw too uh, before I tighten that one any further. Just a good idea in general to start both your screws on anything like this. Okay, so got it back in. So actually, what I ended up doing, it was just too much to try to start that other screw with the actuator loose. So I finally figured out exactly where it lined up and got that bottom screw tight. Um, it's kind of easy to look at this. Well, there's nothing easy about this, but it's, it's one tip I would give you is this little standoff here with this little thing that sticks out. Um, that's what the other one looks like. So you can kind of visually, when you look up in there, kind of see where it's supposed to go, make sure that this arm is lined up where it's supposed to go and tighten that down. And then, uh, and then of course get the, I, I hand started or finger started that screw up top and then did the rest with this little miniature ratchet that I picked up on Amazon. Uh, this is not a sponsored <laughs> video or anything. This is uh, something I bought with my own money. Um, but this is worth every penny. I think it was about, I don't know, 13 or $14. Um, it came with these little short guys here, um, but this ended up being the perfect length to, um, to, to reach around uh, the actuator itself. And the other nice thing about this, um, uh, compared to some other ratchets I own that have the release button here, um, this one I can actually put my finger on the end of it for leverage. So it's not easy, um, but it's doable. And, you know, the hardest part of this obviously is getting to that top screw. Um, so let's get the rest of the linkage and arms put together. Um, I did not put any of that grease up there. There seemed to be plenty left on it. I probably will, and I didn't want to add anything slippery to the mix. Um, I will probably put some on these new pieces since they don't have. All right, so looking at the old uh, actuator, this metal bar um, is going to be positioned like this with the, you can see how it has a bend. That's going to be up near the uh, up near the actuator, and that goes in the little hole uh, on this white piece here. All right, I, I got it in, hooked in there. It does make a satisfying click um, when it uh, clicks into that white part up there. Um, <clears throat> I would probably say um, go ahead and install this bar uh, before you install the actuator. Um, I mean, it's not the most difficult thing in the world, but it, it'd be easier to do before you install the actuator. Um, so now we just have that larger white piece. All right, so I am gonna, all right, so I am gonna go ahead and install some of this provided grease on this piece. Um, probably should have put some on that upper white plastic piece as well, but there was already a fair bit up there on the other hardware and I just, like I said, I did not want to add any complications of grease in with trying to get that actuator up. So I'm just going to put in some. I'm sure there's an official amount and recommended way to do this, but it really can't be rocket science. And like I said, there's already a fair bit of grease up there. And I guess if you're going to go crazy with it, you clean all that up and just put fresh stuff everywhere. But I think it'll be all right. 
And so this little guy is gonna be positioned like this in the car. Uh, so the front of the car, wheel well, back of the car, or you know, floorboard. So that there, this little corner, um, that's where that other end of that bar is gonna snap into. And so we've got these two tracks here and here. And so as we're positioning this in place, we need to make sure that those two little nubs that stick out that control the doors fall into where um, these uh, these tracks are. So you, you know, you're probably gonna have to move those doors back and forth um, where they sit in there and um, <clears throat> uh, before you screw this down. Um, try to film this, I'm not sure how that's gonna go. Got the bottom one hooked in place. It's that top one that's tricky to feel for. Gotta find it. There it is. I see it now. Make sure you can look up beside the wheel well and find, or beside the center console and see it. All right, so looks like this little guy I think needs to be you know you, you can see which directions it can go I think it needs to be pointed down at least the way everything is lined up I think don't really know seems to be on there but I can't tell if the top one is yeah the top one is hooked so yeah if you if you point the bottom nub down then the top one should just line up and then you can kind of look up between this duct and the center console and rock it back and forth and see that that's moving so while we have that lined up let's at least start the screw on there and then we'll get the bar on there and put the computer back in and hope this works All right, so now we just need to rock this back. And if you look close, you can actually see the little nub going in its track there. So let's get that. And then you can hear that satisfying click it made. So now that's all back together. I'll throw the computer in here and hook up the battery and then we'll go ahead and I'll set the camera back up here and we'll see if it, if it moves around. So a quick look at the, uh, the computer here, the BCM that we pulled out. So there is actually uh, labels on here that tells you what order um, the cables go in, the colors. Um, of course, the only problem with that is you can't really see that label when it's, in, when it's reinstalled. So I would still go with taking a picture of it before you start. All right, so we've got it all hooked up here and uh, I'm ready to connect the battery and start the car. I'm not sure if this will do any movement when we connect the battery or or when we start the car. As I, as I mentioned earlier, as far as I understand, it will move when we uh, some when we start the car. So let's just hope it, um, it comes at its home point from the factory, that actuator, and everything just works. We'll find out. All right, I'm gonna attempt to just push down the brake with my hand to start the car. <sighs> All right, it didn't move. It's more than it was doing before. Let's crank the air now. We've got a moderately cool air. So let's crank the air down. All right. You can see that moved into position there. All right, the air is nice and cold. So let's see if it switches over to heat now. The 
you can see that it has moved into an entirely different position. And we are getting heat now. As I'm inching the uh, the temperature down, it just moves a little bit at a time. Pretty neat. I'm going back to heat again. All right, let's make sure you know we've got cold on both sides now. So let's make sure that. Switch this back to auto, and we'll make sure the passenger side still does what it's supposed to do. We got cold on both sides. Uh, here it's switching over, and now we've got heat on one side and cold on the other. So, yeah, we're. Uh, we are in good shape. So. Alright, as promised, um, out of curiosity, I'm going to pry this thing open and see what it looks like. Uh, like I said, this is a 2008 vehicle, um, so uh, this has been in the car for, uh, what, 13 years? Is that right? Am I mathing right? Anyway, so let's see what one of these looks like after they've been in a car for over a decade and see if we can find any signs of um, why it failed. And of course I'd be more careful if I cared, but and, you know, there might be a way you could fix one of these, but I wouldn't want to go through what I just went through more than once and fiddle with it and then try to put it back in the car and fiddle with it some more and find out it doesn't work and yeah. So, is that all of them? Something is still holding it. Ah. All right. Now. Okay. So, about like you'd expect. Um, I don't see anything right off the top of my head that would explain why this failed. Um, a lot of grease here. But I don't see necessarily any teeth that are stripped. And we do have, um, these contacts here. Uh, that line up with these, I guess, that tell the uh, computer um, what position the actuator is in. So, um, so it could be just a simple matter of these contacts wearing out, or these little little guys here that slide up against the contacts wearing out. Um, you know, because honestly, I didn't didn't really hear any any noises anymore. I, I do seem to recall the car was making some chatter beforehand. Um, but um, I had a guess. I'm thinking maybe a, a, some sort of an electrical problem, or it could just be the motor went bad. Um, again, that gear looks good. Some grease in there, but I don't see any broken teeth or anything. So it does not appear to be, from what I can tell, unless the motor itself went bad, it does not appear to be a mechanical problem. And it could be, you know, if you watched my video on uh, the um, 
what was it? The the lock actuator on this car it had a little motor that just burned out after a while. So it, it very well could be, you know, the same kind of an issue where um, where this motor just burned out after a while. Um, but at least on the surface, I don't see any you know obvious burn marks or broken plastics or um, or anything that would give us a clue as to what happened. So motor or electrical issue um, with these contacts would be would be my stab in the dark guess. Alrighty guys, that does it for this video. I hope uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it's uh, helpful to someone and I uh, hope you'll consider subscribing to our channel and uh, I'm sure we'll have uh, more videos on this vehicle uh, down the road and uh, of course we've got a pretty good library of uh, videos already built up on not only the CTS but also the uh, SRX and the XT5. Uh, thanks for watching and hope you'll consider subscribing. Thank you.